Okay, maybe we can go already. So, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, uh, today, we are happy to have uh, Christian Senlara, and he will speak about space time dynamics and integrable systems. Uh, please start. Uh, th thank you, Dimitri. Uh, I am very happy to be here, and also I would like to say thanks to Ariel Arza for the invitation. And the title of this work is Space-Time Dynamics and Integrable Systems. And the authors of this work are Marcela Cárdenas, Francisco Correa, Christian Celera, that's me, and my PhD advisor, Miguel Pino. Well, uh, in this work, we found a novel relation between integrable models and general relativity. And to be more precise, we found that a broad family of integrable models known as the AKNS system, a system that encompasses uh, several well-known equations such as the KDB equation, for example, uh, will be related with ADS3 general relativity uh, using specific boundary conditions for the gravitational field. So uh, here is the table of contents. Uh, for the first part, we're going to motivate the work. Then we're going to define the objective that we want to pursue. After that, we are going to uh, review some aspects of the AKNS system that's an integrable model. And then through specific boundary conditions, we're going to connect this integrable model with ADS3 general relativity. After that, we're going to study the consistency of the boundary conditions, namely the, a well-defined action principle, um, asymptotic symmetries, uh, the algebra of charges. Also, we're going to connect these boundary conditions with gravitational physical configurations for example, black holes. And finally, we are going to conclude. Well, uh, the motivation are twofold. And the first part is given by ADS3 general relativity. Uh, general relativity is a trivial theory, meaning that the Riemann tensor in two plus one dimensions may be fixed in, ter in terms of the Ricci tensor. This means that the geometry is locally ADS. Hence, there, there, there are no propagating degrees of freedom uh, for example, as gravitational waves. Well, uh, boundary conditions in, in a trivial theory as, as general relativity from the bulk perspective are important. Why? Because uh, boundary conditions define asymptotic symmetries. And asymptotic symmetries are all the set of transformations that preserve the form of the boundary conditions. And then we can separate uh, bond, um, pure gauge transformations and nether symmetries at the boundary. And nether symmetries at the boundaries are important since they allow us to define conserved charges. Well, <clears throat> in the context of the work of J.D. Brown and Mark Henault of 1986, they shown that uh, with specific boundary conditions, uh, ADS3 general relativity exhibits uh, asymptotic conformal symmetry. Moreover, in 1995, the work of Cosser and Noan Van Drill with the same specific boundary conditions, they proved that indeed the theory has uh, propagating boundary degrees of freedom. <coughs> well, despite that the theory is trivial, uh, we have uh, black hole solutions. And this was shown by Bagnado State Table in Anzanelli in 1992. And these black holes are identifications of the ADS space time. Well, in the context of boundary conditions, they have been worked, for example, in the article of Hawking, Perry, and Strominger of 2016 as soft hair arising from supertranslation symmetry, from BMS supertranslation symmetry. And if we consider, for example, a black hole uh, near the region, near the even horizon region, if we impose some specific boundary conditions, we may obtain an asymptotic uh, symmetry algebra of, uh, of infinite dimensional. And uh, moreover, in the context of the work that we are going to pursue here, uh, uh, there are several works of, for example, Perez Tempo and Troncos of 2016 or Ojeda Perez of 2019 that relates general relativity with for example, KDV type boundary conditions, KDV modified KDV boundary conditions, also with the Businesk hierarchy, which are integrable models. 
Well, uh, uh, for a second part, the, we can motivate the work from the part of integral systems. Uh, we know that a lot of physical phenomena are described by nonlinear differential equations. However, a particular set of them are integrable. There are a huge definition of uh, what is known as integrable model. There's a lot of authors who say that maybe integrable systems um, admits a lax pairs, uh, integrable system admits a zero curvature formulation, integrable systems may be solved by the inverse scattering transformation. However, we will use the definition that an integrable system uh, admits infinite um, conserved charges and these conserved charges are all in evolution, as we can see here. And this property will be very special since we're going to use it to compute the asymptotic algebra, but from the part of general relativity. Well, also uh, integrable systems admit uh, soliton, soliton solutions. And according to, oh, sorry. Tend to move here. And according to the work, according to the textbook, sorry, of Drazin and Johnson, um, solitons are perturbations that they do not deform under time. And also when they interact with another soliton, they superpose, but also they maintain their form. Also, solitons are localized in some region of space. And for example, it is well known the solution of. Uh, King solution, King soliton solution that appears in the sine Gordon equation, for example. And also, there are breeder solutions that are uh, periodic solitons in space for the sine Gordon equation. And also, in the context of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, there are remarkable solitons such as the Peregrine solitons, which is a double spatio temporal localization, and the Ahmediev soliton, which is periodic in space and localized in time. In time, sorry, and also it's the picon solution that it, that is um, a soliton disco, uh, which has a discontinuous first derivative, and it appears in the integrable equation known as the Kamasa-Holm equation. Well, uh, uh, as we said at the beginning, there is an integrable system that encompasses well-known equations. For example, the KDB equation, the modified KDB equation the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And it, it's, a, it's a broad family of integrable system that encompasses in one single formalism all the aforementioned equations and its name is a KNS system. So uh, with this in mind, we can define a general objective and it will be to provide a gravitational framework to study the AKNS system. And in particular, we will study the integrability of the AKNS system. In the context of ADS3 general relativity, we will review the role of boundary conditions. Also, we will impose boundary conditions to the gravitational field. We will study the consistency of these novel boundary conditions. And we will recover an associated metric from the boundary dynamics, and we will connect it to gravitational physical configurations such as black holes, for example. Well, uh, in this part, I am, uh, we are going to review uh, the integrability and aspects of the AKNS system. Well, in, in their seminal article of 1973, uh, the authors, Ablovitz, Kaup, Nivel, and Seeger, uh, found a system of nonlinear partial differential equations that looks in the same manner, where in this case, the functions R and P depends on, on the time and the angle where uh, dots denote time derivatives and prime denotes uh, derivatives with respect to phi. <coughs> R and P and I are di the dynamical fields and the functions A, B and C are, depends also of T and phi and are functions that has to be specified. Also the parameter uh, chi that you can see here is a constant number. Well, we will follow their work and they assume a finite expansion for the functions A, B, and C in powers of this constant number chi. And we will expand A, B, and C in the following manner. And now we will replace uh, this expansion in, the, in these equations. And we will equate order by order in this number. 
And we will obtain a set of equations for the coefficients associated to the nth power of the spectral parameter, namely the following recurrence relations. And here we can see that if we know, for example, the value of C0, uh, we, can, we can obtain the value of C1. If we know the value of B0, we can obtain the value of B1 and so on. If we, if we know the value of B1, we can know the value of B2, etc. And uh, we obtain the following dynamic equations that depends, that depends of, the, uh, of the number capital N, which was um, uh, the number where we truncate the expansion that you can see here. Well, uh, it Sorry, is could you please uh, repeat again where this first equation, first like s s system of equation comes from? This? Yeah, this one. Yes, when we equate order by order in this, uh, in this number, in this auxiliary parameter, whose name in particular is known as a spectral parameter, uh, we will obtain the following what, equations here. What do you equate to what? Uh, we will equate in terms of the power of, the, of this parameter. For example- So, so you, you have some you, equation you, and you decompose it in Xi, but what equations do you mean? What equations? No, no, no. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we can replace the following expansion here, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we can replace in the following equations here. And for example, as you can see here, uh, a prime minus PC plus RB, right? And mm -hmm. if we replace the following expansions, one can really obtain, for example, a N prime minus PCN plus RBN. Yeah. Since we have, we have the same um, powers on A, on C and B, right? Yeah. But also here, when, when we have this, for example, second equation that I am moving my mouse here, uh, we will obtain, for example, that uh, the spec the, this constant number, the spectral parameter, uh, will be has um, will we, will we will be have uh, one more degree in the power, right? Because okay, it will be multiplied by the by the by this number, right? Mm -hmm. And then you will have to define. Um, you will have to, to do some change of variables. And after that, it will be really, it will be easily to obtain the equations that I, that I am obtaining here. Uh, may I also ask in this system, P and R are yes. entering linear, linearly. Why you are saying it is a non-linear system? Of course, it's coefficients are not constant. This no, no, no. That, this, is, this is the recurrence relations, but the equations of motion are here. But, but the, in the beginning, this AKNS okay. system. Ah, the AKNS system are this equation first. Okay. Yeah, it, but it is linear in P and R, right? Yes, but uh, uh, um, yes, indeed. But, but af, af, after that, you will have, as I said, uh, A, B, and C are functions that have to be specified. And he's a constant. And for example, uh, as we can, as we, as we will see later, we can see that A, B, and C are polynomials of this uh, auxiliary parameter. Hence, but you are uh, saying that P and R are dynamical fields. And P and yes, R, indeed. and for P and R, the system is something like a sort of covariant constancy, right? It's first no, order in No, 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 but I, I understand. But for example, A, B, and C uh, will, be, will be written in terms of these functions P and R. And for example, you will obtain the KDV equation. And that's a nonlinear equation, right? But I, I also, think that this system is like auxiliary linear system in the context of integrability. It's like auxiliary linear system for the nonlinear PDE. Is sure, it? Sure, yes, correct? like the second, like this, exactly, yes. Like the, for example, ah, the, so, so, so big, okay, okay, but then it is linear. But the yes, nonlinear arises for, as a lax. Yes, if, if you see here these, these equations, okay, you, you, you will say that a priori these equations are linear, but you don't know the, the form of A, B, and C. So I, I think it's a question of, term, of terminology, right? Because uh, if you know A, B, and C, the system will transform into, into non-linear equations, but I understand what you are saying. Yeah, but A, B, and C are not functions of P and R. 
Is, yes. is it like no, no, because no, you're saying are... A, B, and C are like background fields, and P no, and no. R are dynamical fields. That's uh, what you are saying. Uh, no, Ma Ma Maxim, let me let me construct the system, and then if you want, we can discuss uh, the question that you are saying. But uh, then I will. Okay, recover, okay, fine, fine. I Thanks. Will, yeah. I will recover yeah, some uh, questions. I just confused a bit. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so we have the following recurrence relations and the following dynamical equations are the, are the equations that you can see here. Okay, so we can construct uh, the first terms in the recurrence. And for example, A naught will be, will be a constant, but for simplicity, we are fixing this, this constant equals to one. And then we are constructing the following recurrence series, but uh, uh, with constants, uh, if, if we appear the constant term, uh, we will obtain the same like the, the same equations but with more terms so the dynamics will be the same and uh, we can obtain b naught b1 b2 b3 and c naught c1 c2 c3 well and we can recover several well-known integrable equations as particular cases of the above construction and for example for n <coughs> for example for n equals to one we obtain the chiral boson equation that you can see here. And for n equal to three, we obtain the following uh, equations. And if we, take the, if we take the case r equal to minus one, we obtain in particular the KDV equation. Uh, Maxim, this, uh, the, this uh, provide a solution for your question? Yeah, I start to see what you're actually doing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But um, uh, so can I ask you also? So I don't please. see. So first system looks simple. So you had only linear in unknowns. Equations were linear in unknowns, and they were just exactly like first, yes, uh, this, first order in derivatives. System, and now they look yes, more this, complicated. This system for n equals to one is known as the chiral boson equation, and the, and indeed is linear. But in general, the equations will be very complicated. But you started from the system of equations. Uh, it was linear in P and R, right? Uh, if you if you do not know what a, b, and c are, okay, I will say that's linear. But then it will it will transform into non-linear equations, or maybe linear. Okay, as this case, but this case is the only case that's linear indeed. So a, b, c, these are just some functions of f, phi, and t. But somehow, as I understand, they get expressed in terms of p, and because of that, system gets nonlinear. Or how exactly, it... exactly, but... and, and, and that's why you can see here. For example, if we replace uh, c naught and b naught, we can obtain that a naught, a naught prime. Sorry, it's equal to zero, right? Yes. Yes. And 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 then uh, you can integrate that that expression, and you will obtain that a naught is a constant of integration that we uh, take to one that a naught is equal to one. Then uh, with, uh, with a naught computed, uh, you can compute, for example, uh, c n plus one, right? And if you take n equals to zero, you will obtain c one. And this, this is equal to one half of c naught minus r a naught. Are you agree? Mm -hmm. And then you can construct c one, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, you can construct C2, B2, and so on. But as you can see here, A n prime depends of P and R. And this appears by when you equate order by order in this auxiliary parameter. It is more clear or not? Yeah, it's clear, but somehow it feels like it, things get more complicated when you start solving them. So maybe I'm just uh, a bit confused and I don't understand how things work. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, the purpose is that this will encompasses in one single formalism uh, several integrable systems. For example, the KDV equation, uh, modified KDV, nonlinear Schrodinger, sine Gordon equation, all of them in one single formalism. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And we will prove the integrability of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I don't remember where I was. So. Uh, we can construct the first terms, the first terms of the recurrence, and uh, we will obtain for n equals to one the chiral boson equation, 
and for n equals to three, we obtain the following equation. However, if we take the value r equals to minus one, we obtain in particular the KDV equation. And also if we take the value P equals to minus R, we obtain the modified KDV equation. So we are considering a three integrable system uh, here. Also, if we take N equals to two, we will obtain the weak rotated uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And the sine Gordon equation is also included in this framework. However, according to the work of AKNS, negative powers of chi must be included in this expansion in order to make it apparent. Okay, uh, uh, I will not explain. If you if you want, you can read the original article. But AKNS uh, followed some recursive methods in order to construct some infinite conserved charges, and we will prove thus that these charges are conserved. In the following: so we have infinite conserved charges, and okay, for this purpose to prove that the charges are in evolution, we will consider the following. The AKNS system may be written as a big Hamiltonian formalism, as we can see here, where D1 and D2 are, are differential operators, and uh, R and P are functional derivatives of, of the nth Hamiltonian with respect to R and with respect to P, respectively, and D1 and D2 are the following operators. And also we can, uh, uh, well, well, they, they shown that uh, An is proportional to the Hamiltonians, while Dn, Dn, sorry, and Cn are functional derivatives of R and P. Well, with, with this in mind, <coughs> uh, the conserved charges uh, H are related by the following recursion formula. And with this, in, and with this, as a consequence of the former, the charges of the AKNS system are in evolution, namely that. One compute, one may compute the Poisson bracket associated to the first differential operator, for example, D1, one can integrate by parts, and then one will obtain, for example, um, Hn comma Hm, it's equal to minus uh, Hn comma Hm. And also for the second Poisson bracket associated to, to the, the differential operator D2. So uh, we shown that the charges are in evolution and they are uh, infinite since we have a recursion relation to relate one of them with, with each other. And uh, I don't know if you have questions related to this part. Okay. So now uh, we will talk about ADS3 general relativity in the vacuum. And the vacuum and with negative cosmological constant, GR may be described in, in terms of two copies of the chern simon action. You can see here where the gauge field A is spanned in the coordinates T rho, the radial coordinate, by the uh, angular coordinate. And the following Lie algebra where G plus minus denote two independent copies of the SL2R the algebra whose generators are the following matrices and the SL2R, the, the SL2R Lie algebra for, the, for these generators looks in the same way. And uh, the connection, the, the gauge connection A is related uh, to the um, spin connection and the field bind uh, by the following manner. And the chern simon section is given by the following expression where the brackets uh, denote trace the wedge product is understood. Uh, A is a one form gauge field and F is the equation of motion. And um, it's a, uh, the turn Simon section is a zero curvature equation of motion. The Einstein equations are a, a zero curvature equation of motion. So uh, we will work in this formalism. And uh, now we want to obtain a boundary term associated to the action principle in order to see that the action principle is well-defined. Well, for that purpose, we will consider the following two plus one splitting, as we can see here. And <coughs> in component, the Hamiltonian action reads in the following manner. And where in this case, Fij is the spatial curvature. And we can see here that AT 
is a Lagrange multiplier and Fij is a constraint of the theory. Well, if we want a well-defined action principle, we must supplement the action with a surface integral, which is given by the following expression. And then uh, this reveals that we must specify a priori uh, some suitable boundary conditions AT and A5 in order to integrate the surface term. Well, uh, this, before proceeding, it is convenient to gauge away the radial dependence. And this will, if we consider the following gauge transformation, where in this case, uh, B is the associated gauge parameter, it will completely capture uh, the radial dependence, yielding that the gauge fields will only depend on time and the angle. Well, now we are in position to impose uh, these novel boundary conditions and they are given by the following expression, where in this case, L is the ADS radius. And as we studied from the AKNS system, in this case, P and R are the fields carrying the boundary dynamics of the theory. And A, B, and C are functions that has to be specified and are polynomials functions on chi, as we said before, that has to be specified. Well, uh, as we said, the Einstein equation looks as the zero curvature equation of motion that we, you can see here. And it yields indeed the AKNS system, but right now in the context of GR, of ADS3GR. <coughs> and the plus minus notation is uh, given for the plus copy and the minus copy. So we have uh, two copies of this equation. Well, uh, uh, as we studied, uh, as we studied uh, before, we may consider the same analysis. Uh, we can expand A, B, and C in powers of, of this constant number chi. And we may obtain the following uh, equations, dynamical equations, where in this case, uh, the, the, the label capital N, uh, which was the, the number when we truncate the sum, in this case, it is denoting a broad family of boundary conditions. Since A, B, and C appears at the level of boundary conditions. Well, uh, the above construction provides a complete framework to address the question whether if the boundary conditions are suitable or consistent. And the first part, uh, which I said is, is a very important part, is given by the boundary term. Well, we must uh, integrate the boundary term. And the boundary term is given by the following expression where I deleted uh, the plus minus notation. I am working with only the plus notation, but the analysis is the same for the minus notation, for the minus copy, sorry. And it can really be integrated as we can see here by the following boundary conditions. So the, 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 the boundary term is a uh, sum of Hamiltonians, of the AKNS Hamiltonians, of the AKNS conserved charges, sorry. Excuse me, may I, yes. may I ask you to, I, I got lost a little bit. So this, uh, this functions, A, B, C, et cetera, which enter the AKNS system, how mm -hmm. are they identified with, comp with um, they are identified with components of connection in the symptotic near boundary expansion or? Ah, it, just, 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 just to understand what goes where. It was a bit yes, too, yes, of too course. fast and uh, not. Sorry, happy. sorry. Uh, uh, as you can see here, A, B, and C appears on the temporal component of the boundary conditions, right? So. Uh, oh, okay. We, so they parameterize uh, your. Exactly. So if if we boundary. expand A, B, and C, uh, A, B, and C are a sum from n equals to zero to capital n. So if you want to stop, for example, for n equals to one, uh, you will obtain some particular set of boundary conditions that we will, we will see them in particular. And if we take, for example, some, some values, you will obtain the brown Heno boundary conditions. If you take, for example, an n equals to two odd values of n, you can obtain uh, well-known boundary conditions that appears in the literature. But, uh, the, but the, the point is that, Indeed, uh, 
uh, the capital N number appears at the level of the boundary conditions. So it's labeling families of boundary conditions. Uh, this solves your question? Uh, yes, yes, thanks. I put a little bit at least. Could you please show the next slide? Okay. So we have the zero curvature equation of motion. And the zero curvature equation of motion in the Chern Simons formalism is analog to the Einstein equation. And <laughs> with the boundary conditions fixed, as we can see here, we can compute the zero curvature equation of motion and we will we obtain the AKNS system. But could you please explain because you started from two equations and finally obtained three equations. The zero ah. curvature condition contains just it, two it, equations. It, it, yes, it, yes, it is a metric equation, right? Since we have the generators of SL2R here, right? We have L naught, L plus minus one, L exactly. minus plus one. So it is a matrix notation and it will be equal to zero. Hence, we can equate equals to zero and we will obtain uh, three equations and uh, uh, three equations for one copy. So for example, for the plus copy, uh, you have three equations while for the minus copy, you have uh, another three equations. Mm, so recall, six equations in total. Uh, in recall, the first line. Okay, recall, that, recall, recall that the generators of SL, SL2R Lie algebra are uh, two times two matrix, matrix right? Uh, two times three equals six in total for the first line. No, 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 on the same slide, please. Here are the generators of SL2. Yes, I see the algebra is three dimensional and you have two zero. And, and, and you, will have, you will have four equations for the zero curvature equation of motion and one of them will be, will be repeated. But along, three the, independent. Along, the, along the L0 component, there will be repeated equations while for this, uh, for the off diagonal part. Okay, okay, will... okay, 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 thanks, yes. Are there more questions? No, not from my side. Uh, is it an accident that you uh, generated the system from zero curvature equation? Uh, I, I, I will be very humble and I, I will say that no, it's not an accident since the AKNS system is an integrable model. An integrable model admits a zero curvature formulation. So we realized that this integrable model may be written as a zero curvature equation, or you can you can name name them as Saharov Shabbat, um, as a Saharov Shabbat system, and uh, we realized that oh this is the same these are the Einstein equation but uh, in the Chern Simons formulation. Mm. I see. <clears throat> okay. Okay. One more question, please. Uh, if we okay, consider. May, uh, may I complement? May I complement? Uh, sure. sure. Uh, sorry. And also, there's been a lot of work of, of people who work with integrable system with integrable systems in the context of the art. Uh, in any dimensions, you mean, or in three D? Yeah. There, there, there's been uh, in any in any dimension, as far as I know, there, there's been work only on two plus one dimensions, on higher spin two plus one dimensions, but only in two plus one dimensions. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, th there were another question, right? Okay, my question about higher spin extension, as you mentioned already. So if we consider the term Simons uh, with uh, the gauge algebra SLN plus SLN, uh, yes. We will produce some type of a KNS system. In this case. Yes, it, it, uh, yes. Right now, I am working on that. <laughs> and and for example, if you if you work with SL three R Lie algebra, you will have a higher spin extension of of a KNS. And, mm -hmm. and right now, we are working with a few colleagues on that problem. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Are there more questions? Sorry for the call. Yeah, so the, the, the logic is, is uh, just to make sure. So the logic is you you have zero curvature equation in three dimension. Exactly. Then you mm -hmm. you impose you use partially your gauge freedom. You impose uh, boundary conditions and it, exactly. it, it gives you like zero curvature in two dimension and you interpret mm -hmm. the zero curvature in two dimensions. 
as uh, the lux representation for the exactly. for, for an yes. integrable model and this yes. is going to be a, a kns yes since uh, and this is general right since uh, the the zero curvature formulation is analog to the lax formulation of an integrable model right so it is quietly the same so we we are saying the same this is the zero curvature formulation which is the einstein equation or you can see it for the integrable model side of this uh, as the lax equation or the but zero all this curvature but, formulation. but all this already at the boundary huh? all Sorry? this happens at the boundary indeed since the theory mm -hmm. is trivial at the boundary as we said as we said at the beginning the role of boundary conditions are important since uh, they define for example asymptotic symmetries uh, dynamic indeed um, asymptotic symmetries are the um, all the set of transformations that preserve the boundary conditions that we are going to to work right now and then you can separate for example pure gauge transformations or nether symmetries transformation uh, nether symmetries at the boundary and and with the nether symmetries you can compute conserved charges right Uh, sorry. Probably he's satisfied with the answer. <laughs> uh, so can, can I ask? Sorry, I, I I missed a bit of your talk, but uh, can I ask why why you need this uh, three-dimensional formulation at all? Because you gauge a very radial direction from the very beginning, so uh, well, uh, third dimension is gone. So you can equally well deal with the two-dimensional uh, zero curvature. And that's sorry, it. sorry, I, I didn't understand the question. W will you repeat it, please? Ah, okay, so why, uh, what do you need this three-dimensional system for? Because you gauge away radial direction from the very beginning. Um, exactly, but 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 we we deleted the radial dependence uh, with a gauge transformation, and if you want, you can recover it. Well, but it comes uh, in one line as usual with this. Uh, pure gauge transformation. So I don't see any big point in keeping third direction or even well mentioning it because well, what you uh, need is a flat connection in two dimensions. Well, the, the big point is, is for example, uh, uh, Cossert, Heno, and Van Drill, they, they prove that uh, with this gauge transformation, you can delete the radial dependence in, in their seminal article of 1995. And they prove that uh, imposing some boundary conditions, you can obtain a uh, field theories at the boundary of ADS3 general relativity. And this is this was considered an example of the conjecture of ADS CFT, right? Mm, yes, in that story, right. But uh, you, well, well, you study some integrable models, I, I guess. So you don't need any of that. Um, yes, I need it. Um, integrable models. Uh, there are there are a few integrable models that are known in three dimensions, for example, as the Kadomsev uh, Petviashili. It's the only integrable model that I know in three dimensions, and it's in more dimensions. I don't know if there exists. As far as I know, uh, integrable model uh, exists uh, the majority of them in one plus one dimensions, such as KDB, uh, Kamasa-Holm equation, etc. So right now we are providing a gravitational framework to integrable models and of this integrable model known as EKNS system. And this system encompasses a lot of integrable models and it can recover well-known uh, boundary conditions such as brown Heno boundary conditions. Yeah, okay, thank you. But, but what is your, um, what is your like, uh, where non-trivial input comes from? Because we know is it like your knowledge of in non-trivial integrable models tells you what can be a non-trivial conditions for ah, the non-trivialness the mid dimensional given... gravity or other way around like three-dimensional gravity teaches you which uh, teaches you how to get consistent integrable well, models. Well, we can map well as far as for me uh, the, the non-trivialness of, of this thing is that we are mapping uh, properties of integrable models into general relativity and providing a gravitational framework, such as the existence of asymptotic charges, for example, asymptotic symmetries. Yeah, yeah, but, this, but, but, but the only non-trivial point about three-dimensional gravity is boundary conditions. The rest exactly. is absolutely empty. There is nothing exactly. in the bound, but boundary condition lives on the boundary. Boundary conditions are everything. Yes, indeed. 
so um, um, mm, I don't know. As for me, as for me, the big point of this is that we are uh, studying integrable systems. Uh, sorry, we are studying particular integrable systems. We are computing its uh, algebra of charges, uh, the mass, the angular moment, etc. But in terms of of general, of, sorry, we are providing a gravitational framework to study integrable systems, and uh, we are computing, for example, algebras which maps from uh, sorry, uh, uh, algebra of charges which maps from the integrable side to general relativity side. And these can be interpreted as mass, angular momenta, et cetera. And that's the point for me. And, and we can, we, we are separating pure gauge and nether symmetries at the boundary. Since uh, turn simon theory is a um, gauge theory, right? Yes, yeah, so maybe okay. Maxim tried to ask the following. So let me rephrase this question, but blame Maxim. So uh, you can take any integrable system in two dimensions, formulate it as a Lux pair, add third direction for free as pure gauge, and you can say you have a gravitational system in three dimensions. Uh, this way, I can even add five directions, no problem. I will have flat connection in seven dimensions if I need. But um, so what, what, it's not clear what are the rules. The rules of what? Uh, well, uh, take any flat connection in two dimensions. Uh, you can add as many extra dimensions as you want and mm -hmm. uh, embed it into a bigger flat connection. OK. Uh, but well, to, to, to choose boundary conditions is not trivial. You must. Um, you must integrate the boundary term. It, it is not. Uh, it is not randomly chosen. It must be wisely chosen. And and JD Brown and Eno uh, teach us uh, that that property that the choice of boundary conditions will yield uh, important um, symmetry properties. It will lead to the um, integrability of the boundary term. And also in the context of the work of Ray and Teitelboim, uh, they prove that. With the boundary term, one can define uh, the energy or the angular momenta. So the, the, the boundary term is, is very important. And the, to obtain the boundary term, uh, you must uh, consider a specific uh, boundary conditions. And this choice is not easy. As for me, uh, sorry, uh, as far as I understand. No, OK, OK, I got it. Thank you. Uh, are there more questions? Okay. Well, uh, we will impose the novel boundary conditions, a phi and et, and uh, as I as I said, the functions p and r carrying are carrying the, the the dynamical content of the theory. A, b, and c are functions that have to be specified and are polynomial functions on this constant number. And the zero curvature equation of motion, as the Einstein equations, <coughs> yield the AKNS system. Well, and we may consider the same analysis as before, and we consider uh, and we obtain the following equations. And as I said, the um, capital N natural number will label uh, the families of boundary conditions that you are considering. Well, uh, the above construction provides a complete framework to address the question whether the boundary conditions are suitable. And for example, the boundary term, we, the, the variation of the boundary term is given by the following expression. However, uh, one can readily using the boundary conditions and that the boundary term integrates as we can see here. And also the asymptotic symmetries. Well, asymptotic symmetries, they correspond to the family of infinitesimal gauge transformations, as you can see here, where lambda is the gauge parameter. And in order to find them, we will consider a general, a general gauge parameter given by the following expression. Uh, where alpha, beta, and gamma are functions of t and phi, and the angular component of the transformation is the following equation. But no, notice that this equation yields equations analogs to the AKNS system. And the equation analog to the AKNS system is, well, the zero curvature formulation, right? 
The difference is that the variation uh, is analog to the temporal der derivative. And also the gauge parameter lambda is analog to the temporal component. So with this in mind, and the property that an is related with the Hamiltonians while uh, bn are functional derivatives of the Hamiltonians and c is functional derivatives with respect to the Hamiltonians, we can obtain the following functions alpha, beta, and gamma. And uh, where in this case, m is a positive integer and labels an infinite family of permissible gauge transformation, the gauge transformations that generate charges. Hence, the infinitesimal transformation of the fields R and P are given by the following expression. So we computed the asymptotic symmetries of the theory. Uh, and we want to, to study uh, the preservation on the gauge transformations of the temporal component. However, uh, the, gauge, the, the, the preservation of the gauge transformations for the temporal component gives equations analog to this one. And it will yield equation analog to the EKNS system. So we will do not obtain more information. Now it's time to compute the algebra of charges. Well, in this theory, in the turn silence formulation, there is a first class constraint that by definition generates infinitesimal gauge transformations and it must be supplemented by a boundary term in order to make it differentiable. And uh, the variation of the generator of charges are given by the following expression according to the work of Reggie Teitelboy and Bañado. And we must specify the value of lambda and the value of a phi. Well, if we specify, we know that the asymptotic symmetries of a phi are given by a following ex by a certain expression that we obtained before, and we can readily integrate the generator of charges, and indeed, it's a sum of the charges of the AKNS system. And now it is possible to prove that the algebra or charges is abelian, devoiding of central charge, and is given by the following expression. Well, as for, uh, uh, as I- uh, uh, Excuse me, sorry, again, just to clarify a bit. But uh, if I remember correctly, asymptotic symmetries are those gauge transformations which are not generated by first class constraints, right? Because if they are generated by first class constraints, they are, yes. they are genuine gauge. But physical mm, ones exactly. are those which do not vanish on, uh, on, on the constraint surface, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to, and, and you, but you were talking about first class constraints. They always generate trivial asymptotic symmetries. Uh, but it, but according to the work, well, if you you can you can see that the first class constraint, you can take the variation, and you will realize that in order to make it differentiable, you must add a boundary term. And this boundary term is given by this by the following expression. Hence, uh, you will have that uh, this gauge parameter lambda um, will have incidence in this term. And as, uh, as proved uh, in the article of Ray and Teitelboim, this term, the variation of Q appears in the boundary term. The boundary term indeed may be written as an integral in the time component of the charge Q. And hence it will have physical, physical incidence. That's what, that's what I am trying to say. Since it appears at the level of the boundary term. Yeah, so this charge, this these charges come from boundary terms. That's what you are saying, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Not from constraints. Ah, ah. Okay. I think I understand your question. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you, you are saying that if we have a first class constraint, uh, we we do not need to care about this term, meaning that it is generating um, gauge transformations, right? Well, Pure gauge not... transformations that you are saying that, that is that yeah is... I, I was just confused why you are considering first class constraints as generators of asymptotic charges because precisely no, no, it... first class constraints 
lead to trivial challenges. Yes, but but you must define a new constraint that will uh, that will have uh, the first class constraint, but also it will have the boundary the boundary integral that we have here, and this constraint. Uh, well, let me say it again. You have the first class constraint. You take the variation. You will find a boundary term, right? And then you will define a new constraint. And the new constraint will consider the first class constraint, but also the generator of charges. And this uh, new constraint you can label like G, for example. And OK, the, the, the uh, G naught, which is the generator of first class constraint, OK, we'll generate the, the infinitesimal gauge transformations. But if you take the variation of G, it will generate the charges of the theory. OK, OK. That's standard. Uh, thank you. Uh, can uh, you comment what you mean differentiable here in this context? Uh, differentiable in the sense that uh, right now, for example, let, let me see here. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know how to integrate this, this term if you, for example, do not know the parameter lambda or you do not know the variation of A phi, the asymptotic symmetry? Well, you will not be able to integrate this term, right? Since you do not know uh, what is the value of lambda and you don't know the asymptotic symmetry of A phi. So in order to make uh, this term, um, in order to integrate this term, you must specify lambda and the variation of a phi in order to integrate. So I, I am using the word uh, differentiable or integrate in, in, the same, in the same manner since uh, we have to obtain Q, but not the variation of Q. We have to obtain the quantity itself, not the variation of the quantity. Mm. So maybe if, if you're pleased, uh, we, we can say to make it integrable. If we, if we take some boundary conditions, you will make this term, the variation of Q, integrable. Okay, yeah. Yeah, now I think it's better. Uh, are there more questions? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry for the cough. Uh, so, uh, as we said at the beginning, ADS3 general relativity is trivial from the ball perspective. Thus, the dynamical content will be captured by boundary conditions and holonomies. And the holonomy in the angular coordinate, uh, the holonomy in general in this case is sensible to the topology of the manifold. And the holonomy is given by the following expression where P is the path order operator and one can uh, with the boundary conditions that we choose, one can obtain um, a closed expression for the holonomy, which is given by the following uh, expression. So the holonomy will give us the physical content of the theory, will give us, uh, if we are able to comprehend uh, black holes, for example, conical singularities, particle sources, or extremal black holes. And that's what we're going to see here. Well, the holonomy, ah, sorry. Uh, we can, uh, for example, we can go backwards. We can go to the metric formalism, for example, and we will try to understand the space sign that we can construct. But maybe that purpose will be a little bit difficult. So in this case, the holonomy uh, is more easy to compute and it will give us the physical content of the theory. So uh, in this case, if M is less than two, according to the work of Martinez, if M is uh, less than two, the configuration represents uh, classical particle sources, which will induce uh, conical singularities on the manifold. And if M is greater than two, it will typify black hole solutions. And if M is equals to two, we will, it will lead to extremal black hole configurations. Well, and, and remarkably, the, the three above configurations are attainable. Why? Since this number, chi, um, it, it's real and um, it's always positive. So we only, we only have the option to play with P0 and R0. So uh, if these terms are sufficiently negative, we will obtain a complex number and the hyperbolic cosine will transform into a cosine 
And then we will have to play in order to see which configuration we will have. But the, the remarkable, the, 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 um, um, the interesting result as for me is that uh, this constant number appears here, which was at the level of boundary conditions are all and the three configurations are attainable. So we will have uh, black hole, external black hole or, or conical singularities. Um, well, also it is important to say that any solution of Einstein equation in three dimensions with a negative cosmological constant correspond, as we said at the, at the beginning, to a spacetime of constant negative curvature. Thus, uh, the geometry coincides locally with ADS, right? So the only difference resides in its global properties, in its global properties, such as the causal structure, for example. And now we can, we can recover the metric. Well, using this relation here and in ADM coordinates where we can, we can write the metric in terms of laps and shift functions where I, where the spatial coordinates are given for the radial and the angular coordinates, we will obtain that the lapse function is given by the following expression and the shift vectors are the following equations. <coughs> the spatial metric will be given by this equation, where in this case, the functions uh, capital omega and omega will be given by the, by the following expressions. And L is the ADS free radius and the Einstein equations, but now in the metric formalism will reduce us to the AKNS system. Well, as final remarks, uh, the family of boundary conditions constructed here encompasses some examples studied in the literature. For example, the well-known Brown and all boundary conditions may be recovered when N equals to one, R equals to one, and then, then setting chi equals to zero. Additionally, the family of KDB boundary conditions that uh, Perez de Pantroncoso work are recovered for the case R equals to one, odd values of N and vanishing chi. Well, a, a detailed discussion of how this work relates to several other boundary conditions for ADS free gravity, such as compare some strong finger of Ojeda and Perez will be given in future works. And this was my, uh, sorry, now the conclusions. So we studied the integrable system known as the AKNS system, and we studied its space time geometrization in two plus one dimensions, namely, we constructed a, a bona fide action principle, a well-defined action principle. We found its asymptotic symmetries. We computed the algebra of charges and we proved that gravitational configurations, for example, are black, black holes are attainable. Uh, further work must be done, such as, for example, the thermodynamics, uh, the higher, higher spin extensions, the Hamiltonian reduction, the, the theory at the boundary using this, sorry, the field theory at the boundary using these boundary conditions etc. And so uh, thank you for your attention. This was my talk. Thank you. Are there any questions? But uh, so, so I have short question on higher spin extension, but uh, do you expect any problems there? Because uh, all boundary condition, well, not all, but okay, reasonable boundary conditions are already known. So you just need to rewrite them or maybe it's not even rewrite and reinterpret them as uh, well, coming from these two dimensional systems. Uh, sorry, you said that, the, that these boundary conditions are known. Well, um... Uh, in, in the context of that comment, uh, well, as far as I know, we are, we are the first who, who realized that the, um, the zero curvature formulation is quite analog to, to um, uh, the Einstein equation in the context of AKNS system. And uh, for higher spin equations, I, I can say for the comments, I, I don't know if we will have uh, some problems, but we will have right now um, a lot of more equations. In particular, we will have six equations of motion for, um, for every physical field. And um, 
we computed the holonomy and the holonomy gives a closed expression. Uh, however, we must um, uh, consider further work since we, this is, that's not a, an article that, that we are finished, but right now we are working on, on it. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, maybe uh, I'll ask uh, somehow again the same, but maybe in a more precise way. So your, what, what you are doing, can it be, so it, it looks like you have a sort of machinery, which, yes. uh, which uh, so you have, a, you have ADS3 gravity, for instance, then you consider which can, what, what you, you find some sort of consistent boundary conditions such that the action differentiable, et cetera, everything is okay. Mm -hmm. And you extract from this some sort of zero curvature on the boundary, which is of course standard, but then you interpret this zero curvature on the boundary as this AKNS system, right? So you mm -hmm. associate integrable system to, to consistent boundary conditions. Mm -hmm. Is it In this correct? Case, yes. Yes, but is it uh, is it correct to say that whatever consistent boundary conditions I take, this will give me some sort of uh, integrable system, or integrability is not guaranteed, or something? Exactly. Yes, it's not guaranteed. Indeed, every step that we computed is not guaranteed. Well, the first step that that you must take in consideration is the integrability of the boundary term, right? Since it, it, it is does it is does not integrate well, you will not have a well-defined action principle. Uh, after that, you must consider that the boundary condition generates um, um, well in, in physical interesting physical configurations, right? And and this will be computed. This will be completely captured by the holonomy, right? And as we as we as we saw, uh, the holonomy. Um, consider black hole configurations, uh, extremal black hole or conical singularities configurations. So uh, choosing- yeah, these, are already, these are already extra, but just suppose I have ADS3 gravity plus okay. consistent boundary conditions such that okay. action is differentiable, everything Perfect. is fine. Okay. Does it give me your machinery? Does it give me integrable system? No. You need extra conditions, some extra. Um, and other way around, if I have a... Sorry, sorry, if, if, the, if, the, if the Einstein equation reduces to an integrable model, uh, yes, you will have uh, the machinery of integrable systems by your side. That's maybe the, uh, that's what you were talking? I, sorry, that's what you were asking? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. So what I was asking, I have a okay. I, I have ADS3 gravity, I okay. found, some, for instance, tricky boundary conditions, but they okay. for fields and parameters, but still action is differentiable. Perfect. So okay. it's a well-defined theory with boundary, with boundary condition. Does, and, and then I give it to you and you apply your procedure. <clears throat> Does it mean that you will, add, sorry, you will give sorry, me, sorry. As, a, as a result, you will give me an integrable system? Uh, not in, a, sorry, you are telling me that, uh... An analog of your question is that ADS3 general relativity is integrable, right? So no, have... no, 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 I'm not, I don't even know what it means. I, there uh, is a very precise thing. I ADS3 gravity mm -hmm. plus boundary conditions, okay. consistent. So action okay. is differentiable. Does it mean that your procedure out of this data, your procedure gives me uh, the integrable system living on uh, the boundary in a sense? No, 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 you will not always have uh, an integrable system by your side. You will have maybe another dynamics and, <laughs> and you, will, um, you, will hide, you will find maybe another system, but it's not necessarily integrable. The, choose and, uh, the, the choice, sorry, uh, for an so, integrable system will be given by, by, the, by if the Einstein equation reduces to an integrable equation and that's it. 
if you, but, if you, if you have that the Einstein equation reduces, for example, to the cortex de Vries equation or the sine Gordon equation. No, but but it, it can only reduce because of boundary condition. Einstein equation is zero. Exactly. Curve. It's a full stop. Exactly. There is nothing exactly. in three dimensions. Yes, but, but if you if All you obtain information enters through boundary conditions. So suppose exactly. I have good boundary conditions. It will give me some sort of boundary dynamics, but you are telling me it's not necessarily integrable. Only exactly. extra conditions. Yes, and the extra condition is that the Einstein equation will reduce it to an integrable equation. And then you will see- but This ah, I don't okay. understand, but, but you are saying the same. You are asking, okay. So you can't, you don't know why in one no, 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 condition give the, you- The four steps that we pursued, which was the integrability of the boundary term, the existence of asymptotic symmetries and the computing of the asymptotic algebra, and the fourth is the, is the autonomy, but uh, okay, I understand your point. Uh, that three conditions, they do not depend on the integrability of, of the system that you are working. You, you can obtain another system that will uh, matches the three, the three consistency conditions, right? And it will but, be not- But it will not be integrable in general. For example, uh, for example you can, the brown, uh, no, brown Henault conditions are integrable. Uh, but for example, uh, integrable systems uh, has an infinite dimensional algebra that's abelian, right? And in this case, you can obtain, I don't know, another asymptotic algebra. And the another asymptotic algebra will be, um, I don't know, in this case, it does not, it does not appear, only Minkowskian, asymptotically Minkowskian space time. But for example, the BMS symmetry. And the equation of motion at the boundary will not necessarily be integrable. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, yes, I have, yeah, I have a comment. Uh, it's completely unrelated, but there is another framework where integrability appears in general relativity, which is going back to Belinsky, Zaharov, and Mason. Uh, so, do you have any comment on that in connection, or there's no connection, it seems? But... Uh, no, no. Um... I know I know about that connection, but only only by name. Uh, I I I not been working on that line. Um, yeah. So I don't uh, know. Sorry. Yeah. So that has to do with four dimensional. Uh, ah, interesting. I understand. Where you compactify in two dimensions. Ah. Uh, and then you get a, an integrable theory in two dimensions, but it has kind of it may have time dependence. Will you tell me the name, please? It's Belinsky, Zaharov, and Mason. Yeah, if you search for Belinsky, Zaharov, Mason, you will find it. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Belinsky, Zaharov. By the way, is it related to self duality? Because self dual gravity is also interesting. Uh, what? Sorry, I didn't understand. Well, it was more a question to Arkady. So uh, this ah, paper okay. that you mentioned, <laughs> no, is no, it no. related to cell duality? Or? No. Uh, because cell dual gravity is also integrable. Okay, yeah. The, no, it's not related to... And Mason yeah. is the same Mason from Twisters. Uh, well, I think this is different, but yes, it's true that Euclidean instant on sort of cell dual gravity uh, configurations, yes. In, like in Young Mills, there is certain integral, integrable structure. Yeah, that's probably third, third framework. Um, are there more questions? <laughs> I wanted to ask about like physical meaning of this. So you find uh, some integrable system, like it has some charges, some symmetries. So these symmetries are symmetries of what? Of the boundary? Uh, what? Yes, the, the physics is capturing the autonomy, right? Uh, we showed we shown that uh, physical gravitational physical configurations are attainable by virtue of the computation of the autonomy. Um, and for example, if you want to recover the BT set black hole, uh, you must consider uh, n equals to one, r equals to one. And that's it. You will go backwards, and then you will recover the beta set black hole, for example. Mm. 
Yeah, so you have like set of different systems. So you have different integrable models and you say that they somehow capture different uh, like polynomies in different, different setups. Yes, exactly. Uh, we, we will have different setups um, according to the value of the, of the, of the holonomy, right? If the holonomy is greater than two, um, we will have uh, black holes, as we said here. If we have M greater than two, we will have black holes. And for example, if M is less than two, we will have uh, particle sources of M equals to two, it will lead to extremal black hole configurations. And this characteristic will be mapped to the metric where we will have to impose these conditions. And then you will be able to construct a metric that satisfies the configuration that you want. Mm -hmm. um, any more questions? Okay, then thank you for a nice talk. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Yeah, and thank you everyone for coming uh, and have a good evening. <laughs>